Well, everybody kind of said after these last two Sunday morning messages that their toes has been hurting pretty bad. And uh, <laughs> I had one or two to say, Preacher, you walked all over my feet. And I said, well, bless God, I missed my mark. I wasn't aiming at your feet. I was aiming at your heart. <laughs> Uh, but hey, praise God, we do need to get our priorities in order, and we do need to be committed to the things that God has called us to do. And so the Lord kind of laid uh, sort of what I would call a soothing message for us this evening. I want to talk to you about the comfort of God, the comfort of God and His encouragement. Take your Bibles and turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter number 1. And uh, let's begin our reading at verse number 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning with verse number 3. Notice what Paul is saying in his writings. He said, Blessed be God. Even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all what? Comfort. Who comforts us in our tribulation. Praise God for that. That we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, Knowing that we are partakers of the sufferings, so shall uh, ye be also of the consolation. Thank you, dear Lord, for the precious reading of God's Word. Now, Lord, I pray that uh, you will break it and feed it to our souls, that we might grow thereby and realize where our comfort and encouragement comes from. In Jesus' name, amen. Life is good. Did you hear me? Life is good. But now there are some times when things happen in life that makes life very tiring. Anybody in here tired? Praise God. A few of you honest. Connor, you don't even need to raise your hand, boy. You're still young and full of blood. The rest of us are old and full of mud. <laughs> Praise God. When you're tired, and sometimes when uh, health is failing, It's easy to fall into what I call the pit of discouragement. And I want you to know that discouragement is one of the greatest tools in the devil's tool chest. The devil wants you discouraged. Now listen to me. Discouragement is a thief. Did you get that? Discouragement is a thief. Well, now, Brother Danny, why do you say it's a thief? Because discouragement will steal your vitality. Discouragement will steal your zeal. Discouragement will steal your joy. Discouragement will steal your peace. And discouragement will steal away from you 
your contentment. Now, if we have nothing to rely on, or if we forget our blessings and begin to get our eyes many times on our circumstances, it's then that discouragement begins to choke away the very vitality and the life out of us. Instead of being discouraged, we need to take a hold. And we need to be encouraged. And uh, we need hope. We need peace. And we need knowledge that our Lord knows all about the troubles that we may be going through. And Jesus has great concern and compassion and he will not leave us uncared for. He will not leave us unloved and he will not leave us and walk away unconcerned because he is concerned about you. I wish that I could tell you that in this world you could live your life and you won't ever have any problems. But I can't tell you that. Because problems can come in the moment and in the twinkling of an eye. And we worry and we wonder sometimes why these things happen to us. And we question, and that's okay. It's okay to question. And we wonder why. And we wonder that uh, God may be far away. Jesus said we would have tribulation in this world. And I suppose probably that his life is one of the greatest illustrations of of someone being tribulated because he certainly was. He, was. he went through much tribulation here in this world. Many of you sitting here, you've been through some things in your life. Many of you are facing some things that you'll soon be going through. Uh, think of uh, Gwen about to have more surgery. Uh, Mike, you're about to have some shoulder surgery. Don't know when yet. Miss Louise, you're going through a lot right now. You, you're going through some circumstances. And some of you may be going through some circumstances that I don't know anything at all about. But know this. God is with you. And he won't ever forsake you. And one of the most important things that I can tell you to do is as you go through these trying circumstances, keep your eyes on Jesus because He is the best way to be encouraged. And in Him you have comfort. In Him you have peace. And in Him you find encouragement. Notice, if you will, to be encouraged and comforted We've got to experience and, and know the mercy and comfort of the Lord. Look at verse 3 again. Paul said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, the God of all comfort. So God is called in this particular verse of Scripture the God or the Father of of all mercies. Now, in the Greek, that word for mercy means he is a God of pity, a God of compassion. Now, some of you may wonder why I use the word pity. Well, God knows that we may be going through some circumstances and he pities us having to go through those things. But then he wants to provide compassion. He's a caring God. Now, it's something that is heartfelt. You know when you're going through circumstances and situations if God is 
speaking to your heart and to your life to bring peace and comfort and help to you. In God's very heart, uh, He feels towards you and He wants to encourage you. Being called the fathers of mercy lets us know that He is the author of mercy. His mercy towards you brings a salvation. His mercy towards you brings the forgiveness of sin. His mercy towards you brings deliverance from damnation, eternal damnation, and separation from God. Why? Because God loves you that much. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. For God so loved you that Jesus shed His life's blood. God is a God of mercy. In Psalm 86, verse 5, the Bible says, Thou art a forgiving and good God, O Lord, abounding in love to all who call upon you. Friend, call on Him. Pick up the prayer line and call Him. I will assure you that you won't get a busy signal. You won't get a busy signal. If you'll call him, you'll hear him say, Here am I. In fact, whenever I begin to think about God's mercy, it brings to my heart what the rest of that verse says about him being a comfort. You see, the word, the Greek word for comfort means that he is one who exhorts you. He lifts you up. He comforts you. And He encourages you. In fact, if you look at that word in the Greek, comfort, you'll find that it comes from a Greek word, and I'm not a Greek scholar by any means, but it comes from a Greek word, parakletos. Now, that word parakletos is basically used in describing who the Holy Spirit is. Now, if you'll notice uh, John 14, 26, listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says there, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. That word for comforter there is the Greek word parakletos. But the paraclete which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance of whatsoever I have said to you. There's been times that uh, I've been standing in this pulpit to preach a message, or in a pulpit to preach a message, that God would carry me back to a place uh, where I was taught many, many years ago in Sunday school. It would bring things back to my heart and mind uh, in, the, in the middle of a message that, that I hadn't even studied to say or prepared to say. But God would remind me, that's the Holy Ghost that does that. Amen. And the Holy Ghost will do that for all of us. All of this shows you that our God is a God of comfort a God of exhortation, a God of encouragement. All comfort comes from God. Yes, I can speak comfort into your life, but if it comes to you, it's going to come from God because I am not the comforter. God is the comforter. It is God who is the God of comfort. It is God who is the God of mercy. And it is God who is the God of love. But you may ask, how is comfort received from God? Well, I'm glad you ask. It's received by faith. It's received by faith. Without faith, the Bible says, it's impossible to please God. So it's received by faith because God says, he is a God of comfort, then you need to believe that He is. And when you believe that He's a God of comfort, then you act upon it and you trust Him 
to provide comfort and you receive from him his comfort as he provides it. Now, the thing that I want to impress upon you, some of the circumstances and things that you face in life, God may have allowed you to face so that you could help and reach into the lives of others. Now, comfort comes by faith, but then it can come by others. God uses His people to comfort you. Now, I know this is a very sore spot, and I'm probably going to knock the scab off of a sore in Trish's life. But Trish had a friend recently not long ago who suffered the loss of a son and Trish met me at the front of this church and she was talking to me about that just a little bit and this is what I said to her Trish you've walked through this valley walk through this valley with your friend and help her through this valley because you've walked through this valley you see she was able to go. Now her dad missed church, but hey, that's all right because they were on the mission field. And they reached into the life of an individual who needed them to reach into their life during a time that they could do that because she had experienced such. So sometimes others can bring comfort. God uses His people to comfort you. When you have a problem, doesn't the Lord sometimes send somebody by to give you an encouraging word? Man, doesn't that feel good? When God sent somebody by to give you an encouraging word, may not have even known what you were going through, but God just sent them by to reach out and give to you a helping hand or to let you cry on their shoulder just a little bit. You see, He comforts you by using others. Something that you've walked through in your life, you may be able to help somebody else as they walk through it. And then He comforts you through His Word. Listen, you need the Word of God more than just on Sunday when the preacher reads it and preaches from the Bible. You need the Word of God. You need to read the Word of God and hear the Word of God every day. The words of God are beautiful and they're given for our instruction and our encouragement. And let me tell you something. Some of you have been Christians probably longer than I have. But I want you to know this. I've been preaching the Bible for over 30 years. For over 30 years I've been preaching the Bible. And every now and then I'll sit down and read my Bible and something will jump out at me that I've missed for 30 years and snaps me into the book. You can learn something new every day. So you can be comforted by the Word of God. And then you can be comforted by the Holy Ghost, by the Holy Spirit of God, the Comforter. Hey, if you're saved by the grace of God, guess what? You're not your own anymore. The Lord has taken up residence in you. Amen. So call upon the Holy Spirit for God to help you. And then there's something else I want us to see. Take encouragement because God is in all of the afflictions that you'll ever face. Notice verse 4. Who comforts us in all of our afflictions so that we may be able to comfort those in any affliction with the same comfort which we ourselves are comforted by God. Affliction could be translated as tribulation, trouble, anguish, persecution, burdens, and of course, affliction itself. Affliction comes in all shapes and sizes. Sickness, death, financial difficulty, uh, unsure of one's future, All of these things, frustration, confusion, uh, hurt. Talked with a man this afternoon. They've had a little upset in uh, some of the things that's been going on in their church. And uh, there's been a little bit of division. God's not the author of confusion. Who is? Satan. 
And because of this, uh, there's been a little bit of hurt. You see, hurt is real. And I wish that I could tell you because you're a child of God, you won't ever have any hurt. But sometimes children of God get hurt the worst. Listen, why do we have afflictions? You ever thought about that question? Why do we have afflictions? You want me to tell you why we have afflictions? Because we live in a fallen world. Did you hear me? We live in a fallen world. And we live in a world of trouble. And sometimes it takes trouble to train Christians for their high calling as children of God to carve upon their souls a... a the very face of Christ. Every situation that I've ever been through in my life. I didn't appreciate it when I was going through it. And I wondered why I was going through it. But since I got past it and I look back, I see God carving, cutting away, doing spiritual surgery, preparing me for what He's called me to do. Look at James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. It's easy to read, but it's hard to do. Listen to what it says. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, when you face trials of many kinds. I'm paraphrasing a little bit. Now let me ask you something. Whenever you're going through tribulation in life, and you jump up and down and say, Well, hallelujah, glory to God, I'm going through some tribulation. Now I don't think any of us do that. But that's what he says here. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, when you're facing trials of many kind because, and then he tells us why, because you know the testing of your faith develops perseverance. There's not one trouble, one trial that you go through in life that won't make you better for the glory of God. A lot of people say, well, I pray to bless God. I'm praying for patience. Well, trouble's coming. Just keep on praying for patience. Trouble's coming. It is. Because trouble worketh patience. Perseverance must, be, uh, must finish its work so that you may be mature, complete, not lacking anything. So listen. Afflictions are a way many times that God uses to make you better. Now, I want to say this, and I want to make it very clear. Afflictions will do two things in your life. Listen to me. Afflictions will either make you better for the glory of God or bitter with God. And would to God it will make you better for the glory of God. And the only way that it can make you better for the glory of God is if you don't let Satan cause you to be bitter. That's the only way. When afflictions finish their course, it makes you better. It makes you stronger. And... Uh, that's how they should be tackled, as a testing, as a strengthening of your faith so that you may receive the comfort and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't have to worry about whether or not He's going to take care of you. He's already taken care of you. Listen, if you even lose your life, you're going to find it because of the cross of Calvary. Listen, you're going to live forever. Forever. The third thing that I want you to see in this is you should be encouraged because you can be an instrument of comfort to others. Verse 4 says, So that they may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort which we ourselves are comforted by God. Listen, when you reach into the lives of somebody else, it glorifies God that you're able to help others. It does. How many of you, because of a trial, have been able to help somebody else that's been through a trial? I'm sure, hey, I have. I have. You see, God doesn't comfort you to make you comfortable. But He does that so that He can make you a comforter to reach into the life of others. Lighthouses. Listen. I found this interesting when I was doing my research. Lighthouses. You know why they built the first lighthouse? Anybody know? Because there was a shipwrecked sailor. That's why they built the first lighthouse. And the shipwrecked sailor said this. 
If there'd have been a light on top of that hill right there, we wouldn't have got shipwrecked. So he went and put a light on top of the hill. Roads are widened a lot of times because a motorist got mangled. Just right over in the edge of Barron County, right now, there's a, they, they put up some high, taller stop signs and some little bumps in the road so that people will know that there's a stop sign there. But it's sad that it took the loss of life to cause them to see that they needed to do that. But it caused them to see that they needed to do that. When people suffer, they tend to learn to care. Did you know that? When people suffer, they tend to learn to care. So God doesn't cause us to suffer and then send a comforter so that we can be comfortable comfortable he sends a comforter so that we can use that and comfort somebody else just like we've been comforted the last thing i want you to see is this you should be encouraged because the comfort you receive from god comes to you through the lord jesus christ verse 5 says this for just as the sufferings of christ are ours in abundance so also our comfort is abundant through Christ. This means basically that all comfort, all encouragement, all hope that you receive through people, through the Word of God, through circumstances, all of that is filtered through the Lord Jesus Christ. It's filtered through the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, comfort is pure, it's good and it's right if it's received by faith. Where our sufferings are abundant, so can our comfort be abundant. The comfort is a spiritual comfort received by faith and by active choice. By your activating your choice. Listen to me as we close. Encouragement is something that belongs to you as a Christian. It belongs to you. If you're a child of God, it's yours. You do not have to live in a world of hurt. You do not have to live in a world of doubt. You don't have to live alone. You don't have to weep in solitude. You have the body of Christ to lift you up. You have the Word of God to teach you. You have the Holy Spirit indwelling you to warm your soul as you go through these things in life. You have the God of encouragement waiting to show you His mercy, His love. All you need to do is trust and remember the Lord's blessings. You need to depend on Him. And you need to keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ, remembering. Jesus said this, Come unto me, all ye labor and are heavy laden and I might give you rest I will give you rest stand with me thank you so much Lord for the reading of your word help us oh God to be comforted and encouraged and thank you so much for a message of comfort and encouragement Use those things that we may go through in life to encourage others, that they too may experience you and your comfort. In Jesus' name, amen.